everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to the top 10 best summer 2017 films. Last year, it was just me and Kevin Falk right here that did the top 10 best movies of 2016 that came out in the summertime. And this year, we've doubled that. It is now a group of four, which I think will make it very, very interesting. I had so much fun doing the top 10 summer video last year. That I figured, you know what? Why not do a follow-up to that video? So, of course, before we do get into the video, let me go ahead and introduce the guests one by one. Hello, everyone from 22 Tiger Dudes channel. I am Tom Blakeney. I do film reviews, my thoughts, trailer reactions, and it's great to be here on this YouTube channel. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the video. Just getting on with it. Uh, what's up, guys? It is Kevin here. As Tony did say, we did do the uh, the top 10 uh, summer video last year, which I definitely had a lot of fun with. Uh, this summer for me was a bit up and down. It started off and it was kind of rough, but I think it got really good towards the end. So I got a lot of movies I'm very excited to talk about. And uh, yeah, so let's just jump right into this. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you uh, for tuning for having me on this. I really appreciate it. And uh, yes, everyone, I'm the Auburn Ronder. If you don't know who I am, my name is uh, Kane LaPlante. And uh, I make uh, electronic house music, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's kind of all I do now. And um, in the beginning of July, um, for a long time now, uh, I've been trying to get back into movies since I kind of fell out of it because I've been making music and stuff, and I got really into music. And this summer, I got back into films. I've seen a lot of summer films. and um, I thought this would be a great opportunity to you know, discuss it with some of my uh, uh, best friends and stuff and uh, some really cool people. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, get right into this. Now, um, I know we didn't really do honorable mentions uh, last summer, Kevin, when me and you did it. But I figured I'll kind of change that up a bit. I'll just go ahead and show you guys what I thought were the good movies of the summer by showing you this picture. Okay, and now with uh, that shown, there is one great movie that unfortunately got knocked off my top 10, Parts of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. I had a blast with this. This is my second favorite in the Parts of the Caribbean franchise. It brought back the magic that on Stranger Tides was really lacking. Um, and thank God this installment put the franchise back on track. Um, I don't really have any honorable mentions. In no particular order, my honorable mentions are as follows. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, Girls Trip, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Captain Underpants, the first epic movie, The Hitman's Bodyguard, and Annabelle Creation. I do not have any honorable mentions. How we're going to do the top 10 will be a little bit different. Whereas with last summer, me and Kevin did number 10, number 10, number 9, number 9, number 8, number 8. You know, it goes on from there. We're going to do it basically how the Schmoes know do it. You know, if you guys follow the Schmoes know channel, you know how they do their top 10s. We're going to do number 10 through number 6, one by one. And then we'll do number 5 through number 2, one by one. And then we'll go ahead and say our number 1 best of the summer, one by one. My number 10 is surprisingly actually going to be Girls Trip. This is, without a doubt, the most surprising movie of this summer for me. Girls Trip is a film I was really dreading. And after seeing such an atrocious movie like Rough Night, which just broke my inner soul, it feels so good to see a movie like Girls Trip. An R-rated movie actually done right. An R-rated comedy movie, I should say, because comedies this year, R-rated movies in particular, they've either been really bad or just plain forgettable, and it just feels so refreshing. Again, R-rated film that's actually funny, that's actually well-written, and the chemistry between these four ladies is really great. Tiffany Haddish, uh, out of all of them, definitely steals the show. And there's a lot of great, great comedic bit, bits throughout this film, including a really great message about friendship, which I really admire. Now, coming in at number nine, this is definitely an unpopular opinion right here, is The Book of Henry. I know this film has horrible, horrible reviews. Like, wow, the reviews are very low for this one. 
And I can understand why people feel that way for this film, but there was just something about the Book of Henry that just really kept my interest, honestly, from the opening scene to the very end. It's a very strange film, for sure. It does take turns. I know for a lot of people, it's it's for the worse, for the strange turns it takes. But for me, it really worked. I thought the performances from Jaden Leiberher, Naomi Scott, um, Jacob Tremblay, uh, Dean Norris, everyone is really great in this film, especially Naomi Watts' role in the second half of this film. Of course, without spoiling anything, where they took her character in the second half of the film, I thought was very interesting. Um, and surprisingly, it even has its little emotional moments too, which I really wasn't expecting. Yeah, the Book of Henry honestly really fascinated me with the storyline. Don't want to really say too much about it. Number eight is Spider-Man Homecoming. This is an awesome Spider-Man movie. Tom Holland was really great at Spider-Man. This is a Spider-Man we all want to see. He feels like your normal high school kid that wants to help out people, of course, but he doesn't exactly know everything that goes on in the world. And I really like how Spider-Man Homecoming really played that out. Michael Keaton as the Vulture is one of the best villains, hands down, in the MCU. He was just so intimidating. And of course, Robert Downey Jr. for what he had as Iron Man. He was really great in the film. And the film did a very good job of using him in a very limited fashion. They don't overuse him. The action is really great. And I just really love the whole John Hughes feeling the whole vibe the whole john hughes vibe that this film gives so spiron homecoming is my number eight i truly had such a blast watching that film i really did love it coming in at number seven is going to be a movie that's not for everyone i could definitely understand why but it just really spoke to me and that is a ghost story um, just how this movie dealt with the themes of losing someone, grieving over someone, how time flies before your own very eyes, and the fact that we're all seeing this from the ghost's point of view throughout this film is so fascinating. It's definitely a slow burner for sure. Uh, the first 10 minutes took a little bit to get going for me. It did take like maybe 10 minutes for me to really get into this film. And that pie scene drags on for way too long for sure. But besides that, I did feel like the slow burning, the slow burning pacing for the most part uh, really worked for me. And slow burners can go either way for me, but A Ghost Story is one of those slow burners that personally did work for me. I love the soundtrack. I just love David, David Lowry's vision for this film. And this is coming from the guy that also wrote and directed Pete's Dragon, which is really cool right there. And the uh, aspect ratio too, I thought was beautiful and really did fit for what this film was going for. So that's my number seven. And to say my number six, it is Megan Levy. This is such a great film that tells a really great story about Megan Levy, seeing the relationship she has between her and this dog named Rex because she's not a people person. So to see how much she cares about Rex and how much Rex has really changed her as a person was just so wonderful. And it really did touch my heart. I think the story overall is just very touchy to me. And Kate Mara gives possibly her best performance so far. And it does have an intense war sequence it really only has like one major war sequence that personally put, had me at the edge of my seat so that is my 10 through 6 okay so my number 10 is something that i know mm, might sound like a bit of an unpopular opinion now this movie did technically come out in april over here in the uk but i'm adding it to this one since this what did come out in may in the us so i'm counting it as a summer movie so and that is guardians of the galaxy volume 2 now let me just say this right now it is not one of marvel's best movies i will definitely admit that but i would say this right now that i somewhat had a blast watching this and what i liked about it is that even though this is more so about Peter Quill's story, this more or less has ev gives other characters to shine than just Peter Quill and just 
have it be all about him and just have him be front and center and just the other characters, yeah, they could just go away. But what I liked is that while this is Peter Quill's story, other characters in the movie do get their time to shine. And I think it really does that really well. And Baby Groot in the movie. Yeah, what more can I really say? And casting Kurt Russell, I thought was an interesting casting choice. And and to me, I kind of feel like Kurt Russell and Chris Pratt kind of look like they could be father and son. So that I thought was interesting casting choice there. So my number 10 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. My number 9 is Detroit. Now, this is a really intense movie that captured the time period that this movie is set in. The performances were excellent, especially from Will Poulter. And Catherine Bigelow did a really good job making this. However, it's low on my list is because I can never really see myself watching it again. Because there were a lot of moments like the motel scene where it was kind of difficult to watch. And as I said, Catherine did really well with this movie. But as, but as I said earlier, it was difficult to watch at certain points. So it's good, but I don't want to watch it again. So my number nine is Detroit. My number eight is Logan Lucky. Now, the best way I can really describe it is that it's, to me, it's more of an end of summer fun movie. I thought this was a lot of fun. I really liked the dynamic between Adam Driver and Channing Tatum. I thought they were really good as brothers. And the standout of the movie I would say is Daniel Craig and this is one of those moments where I don't I don't see Daniel Craig and just see the character in this movie and as I said Daniel Craig in this movie I would say is the biggest standout of the movie so my number 8 is Logan Lucky my number 7 is Spider-Man Homecoming okay so what I liked about this movie is that it doesn't waste time on telling the origin for the third time. And let's face it, how many times do we go to see Peter Parker getting bitten by the spider and seeing Uncle Ben dying? Gonna see that. So this movie tells the story where Spidey wants to be part of the Avengers after his appearance in the airport fight in Captain America Civil War. And I think as a story for the movie, it was really interesting. Tom Holland was really good as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. And I think I think he is one of the best actors to play Spider-Man alongside Tobey Maguire in terms of live action. Yeah, I, I said it, people. Come at me. Anyways, and so what I liked about Tom Holland in this movie is that he manages to balance both the funny side of the character, but also know when to take the situation seriously. Michael Keaton is really good as the Vulture, and overall, while this isn't better than Spider-Man 1 or 2, and it's not the best Spider-Man movie ever, as some are claiming it to be, but as a standalone movie, it's really good. So, my number 7 is Spider-Man Homecoming. My number 6 is The Red Turtle, and this was, this was a really good film, because... This was a visually impressive movie that really told the story through visuals than just than just dialogue, because there's no line of dialogue. I mean, sure, uh, sound sound is made in the movie, but there is like no line of dialogue. And what I liked is that this movie tell told the story through the visuals than just relying on the dialogue, <laughs> along with the brilliant score. I would say that they both blended really well and didn't really feel out of place. And I think what this movie shows is that you can tell a story through visuals if done correctly. And if you haven't seen it yet, then I would highly recommend that you check it out. So my number six is The Red Turtle. All right. So um, 
My number 10, uh, this is a film that I really wasn't looking forward to all that much, mainly because of how this universe has been. But this was definitely one of the highlights of the summer for sure. My number 10 is absolutely Wonder Woman. I mean, talk about a, a 180. Like, holy shit. I mean, we go from Batman v Superman, a movie that really disappointed me and really just was such a missed opportunity in virtually every way to Suicide Squad, a movie that I don't, I actually really did enjoy, but I do recognize has a lot of flaws, definitely. Um, so naturally, I really was not looking forward to Wonder Woman, but after watching it, the main reason why I think this movie excels um, in the way the Batman Superman Suicide Squad didn't is because it kept things simple. You know, Batman v Superman Suicide Squad, there's like 50 plot lines, there's so many characters, it's hard to follow what's going on at points. Wonder Woman, not really the case at all. Uh, honestly, every character I did feel connected to, even some of the characters I didn't think I was going to connect to. Like, for example, um, the one soldier who wanted to be, I believe he wanted to be like an actor, and his whole character I found to be very compelling. D Danny Houston's character, I, I really did like Danny Houston. I thought he did a really great job here. Uh, I really just connected with a lot of the characters. Gal Gadot, again, fantastic as uh, Wonder Woman. I think she probably is the best casting out of all of the DCEU films. I thought she was absolutely brilliant in this role. She perfectly embodied, I think, the uh, badassery of the character, but also the, um, you know, sort of like the wonder. I mean, this is someone who, you know, she goes into the real world, and there are so many things that she's so surprised with, and they took kind of the fish out of water story and actually made it something different, and I definitely really did enjoy that. And the action sequence. The action sequence was definitely did not disappoint here. I just thought, all in all, this was a fantastic movie. It really did show the potential I think the DCU really does have and it really did make me a lot more excited for Justice League which I really hope does not let us down that for all those reasons is why Wonder Woman is my number 10 my number nine this is a film that I was looking forward to but for me kind of came out of nowhere and that is a ghost story you just don't see movies like this anymore. You really don't. A, a film like this is just so rare. This is, and I've talked to Tony about this, and you know he very much will attest to this and will agree with me, that this is the definition of visual storytelling in every way. There's barely any dialogue in this movie. When there is, it's done very well, but it's, it's used very, very sparingly. And not only that, but this isn't a movie where you're seeing an actor really react to things. You are, but in a different way than you normally do. This movie really reminds you how important body language really is because throughout most of the movie, Casey Affleck, you know, he is a ghost. And you're wondering, well, how the hell can I connect to a ghost? Simple. You focus on the body language and you focus on the different movements that the character will make. And, you know, the story, without spoiling it, it har it's heartbreaking. It really is. And it deals with the passage of time in a really big way. And it really makes you think about a lot of things that you don't really want to think about. And no, it's not an easy watch. It's definitely not. It's a movie where you end it and you're kind of feeling really depressed. You're kind of feeling like you're nothing. But it really portrays the idea of death perfectly. The idea that once you die, everyone kind of has to go on their life without you. And that everything, you know, when you die and when you come back as a ghost, you're as worthless as just the chair on the floor or the couch. That's how expendable you really are. You're simply just not important anymore. And Casey Affleck coming to that realization, I just thought was so brilliantly realized. Yes, I agree with Tony. The pie scene was way too long and it definitely could have been cut, I think, by at least five minutes more, uh, five minutes shorter. But all in all, a ghost story pretty much did everything that I really wanted to do. And that is why a ghost story is my number nine. My number eight is also an indie film that actually a lot of people surprisingly have seen. I didn't think this movie was going to get a lot of love, but it actually has. And that is none other than The Big Sick. I mean, just talk about a really enjoyable film. That's really what this is. It's a very enjoyable film, but it's also very different from your typical romantic comedy because it starts off and you think you know where this is going to go. You know, boy meets girl. They have, you know, different cultures and things like that. You think you know where it's going to go. You really don't because in the third act, holy shit, this thing's changed. And it was extremely well done the way they did that. 
it's, you know, not only, I mean, I still really love the first two acts, but the third act is really what impressed me the most, is the direction that this movie really does take. It just, it goes in a direction that I don't, you don't expect most romantic comedies to go, and that's something I really do love, is how grounded in reality this movie really was. But it also is really funny. This movie's not, like, really depressing or anything. It actually is very funny. I was laughing throughout and finally, I mean, we've been waiting for so long, but finally another movie from Ray Romano that's not an Ice Age movie. Oh my God, who knew? I mean, he was fantastic in this movie, and I really want to see him uh, do more stuff after this, really. He was fantastic here. I really think everyone did a really great job. Uh, Kumal Nanjani, I mean, he's really having an incredible year. I know he was on Hall and Catch Fire, I mean, not Hall and Catch Fire, Silicon Valley. <laughs> that's the, so he was on Silicon Valley. Um, but he really is having an amazing year, and uh, I think he definitely is going to get a lot of recognition after this film. And The Big Sick just really impressed me, and that is why it is my number eight. My number seven, you guys may be like, why isn't this higher? And I'll explain why. It's mainly just because there were so many films, the top five especially, were just I think I just, I, I can't, I care about the characters and things like that a lot more than I did with this movie. But number seven is still an amazing film. And that is that movie right there, Dunkirk. Um, Dunkirk, obviously everyone was really looking forward to. And I think it is still an incredible film. Just because it's this low doesn't mean that I didn't love it because I absolutely did. Could they have maybe done more of the characters? Uh, yes and no. I think they could have maybe expanded them a little bit. But at the same time, when they're in this situation, there's not really a lot of time for these characters to interact. There's not really a lot of time for these characters to get to know each other because there's constantly in fear of the war and they're constantly in fear of the enemy attacking. And putting you into that story, I thought it was just really well presented. And that's something I think Nolan did an absolute amazing job with. I mean, he really just transported you in here and really just showed you how horrifying war really is. It is an extremely exhilarating film. It's unlike most war films I've seen, and it zooms by so quickly. It's not one of those war films that goes on for two hours. And I'm not usually a fan of war films. You know, I've said this many times, but I find a lot of war films to be very repetitive. I find it to be very boring at times. And this is one that I honestly really did enjoy. I definitely really did want to see it again the second was over it's different from like i said other war films i've seen but i think it's just another uh staple that really just shows how amazing of a director nolan really is and uh Dunker for all those reasons is my number seven and then my number six uh this is a movie that i think really no one unfortunately has seen enough of netflix's film okja is my number six and i really did love this movie i mean i know i complain over and over that oh netflix you know they keep making too many movies this is what they need to be making it really is i mean this is mastercraft in terms of directing uh the story in general it's really interesting, but it's also very insightful. It's really kind of shedding light on an issue that I don't think we think enough about. And I think after this movie, it kind of gives you a new awareness to this subject that you just didn't really know about. And again, just like a ghost story, it's not an easy watch, definitely. There are some scenes that are definitely very hard to watch, especially if you're an animal lover, which I know Tony definitely is, and I am as well. It definitely is hard to watch at points, but... It is definitely a very well-done film. Uh, it has some amazing performance in there. The main actress, I can't think of her name right now, but she absolutely killed it in this role. The cinematography as well is just so well done. And you really do fall in love uh, with Ocha. You really do. You fall in love with their whole relationship uh, throughout the movie. I think it was just very well handled in that regard. And for all those reasons, Ocha is absolutely my number six. All right, so... Like I said in the beginning of this video, I got back into film in July, so that means I really haven't seen much from May and June, and yes, it means I have not seen Wonder Woman, I just want to preface that right now, so it is not in my top ten. How dare you! Okay. <laughs> You're not I, Baby I, Driver yeah. either. Oh yeah, I'm a Baby Driver. I was supposed to go see Baby Driver, but I didn't. Um, what is wrong with you, boy? I just bought the Blair Front Woman, though, so I will watch it soon. Uh, because, uh, you know, I haven't really seen many Star Wars. I've seen over ten, but uh, I've only seen eight films that I actually liked from the summer. Um, so my ten through nine are movies that I didn't like. Interesting. <laughs> um, so this is going to be fun. Uh, yeah, it's uh, number ten's a ghost story. Um, I'm sorry. This movie was not good, in my opinion, because... 
I didn't really care at, at all what was going on in this film. Um, I don't understand how people can feel emotionally attached to a film where we barely know characters for 10 minutes. Um, it just, I just, I, I, obviously I speak those opinions, but I just don't understand it. Um, it's not that I thought the movie was boring. I just thought that it really wasn't like the best written film. I think that uh, a lot of the reason why people love this movie so much is that because they just like other interpretations and stuff, which is fine. But like, for me, I don't really think the movie is that deep, honestly. And in the end, it just becomes extremely confusing and it makes no sense. Um, yeah, I just didn't really like it. And then my number nine is Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. Uh, I really did not like this movie. Uh, I, I, I know it's like an innocent kids movie, which it is. Um, and as someone who actually really liked the, the books growing up, I've read like five of them. I was surprised to have not enjoyed this film. Um, I just, I didn't think it was funny. I like laughed once basically, or like twice. One of them was probably a chuckle. I didn't think the animation was good. Uh, they definitely should have raised the budget. It was boring. It just, it, it, I just, I didn't, I didn't like the characters. Just nothing about it really appealed to me at all. Um, and for a movie that's only 90 minutes, the fact that I almost fell asleep during it, I think tells you something. Now on to my uh, eight for six, which movies that I actually like, and which ones I want to talk about. Number eight is War for the Planet of the Apes. I do think this movie is overrated, but I still really like it. I don't think it's a masterpiece. I do think it has flaws, but it is such um, a gripping in the film. It's it, it's a character study uh, as well, and I mean, visual effects are fantastic. Andy Circus is just so so good, obviously, but we've said enough about Andy Circus. Uh, and like I said, the whole character story aspect, like, the reason why I've loved these films is because we really get into the mind of Caesar, um, along with the great action. Oh my god, the first, the opening scene is so, so heart pounding. And this one, we really do explore Caesar and, like, his limits and stuff, and, you know, how far he will go to, you know, avenge something. Um, like, I thought it was well written. My issue with the film is that I do think the second half is extremely boring and filler, and the movie could be cut by, like, 25 minutes. Uh, but that's really about it. I still really like the film, and that's why I'm a number eight. And my number seven, yes, I have this above uh, War of the Family Apes. Uh, hopefully people don't come in for this, but uh, Death Note. I actually like this movie. I don't know why I do like this movie as much as I did, but I have not seen the original uh, anime. But for some reason, I just really enjoyed it. I thought the story was really interesting. Um, and then again, I haven't, you know, seen the anime or anything, so if I seen that, I probably wouldn't like this as much. I thought the acting was fine. It wasn't predictable for me, actually. And I, I really liked uh, the characters, to be clear. So I know a lot of people hate, there may probably movies that they hate the characters, but I like the characters. And, you know, I really enjoyed Death Note. I had a lot of uh, fun watching it. And um, my number six was a movie that caught me by complete surprise. I... Uh, I went to go see some theaters when I was on vacation, just for the hell of it, because I had nothing to do with that night with my family, and... I was shocked that I really liked this movie. I almost loved it. And that is Animal Creation. I was really surprised that this movie was actually good. Like, I know uh, people are like, oh, it's from Dr. Lights Out. I haven't, I didn't see Lights Out. So, uh, and I haven't been a fan of the Conjuring franchise. Um, so the fact that this film I almost loved tells you something. I thought that it was really good. Uh, the story is extremely interesting and it, you know, it's kind of different from horror film. It's, it's a very slow horror film, which I liked. The movie's very silent, um, which I liked. And it really gets you, you know, you really know the characters. And the tension is very slow. Um, and it's a very menacing film. And when the terrifying moments happen, it's loud, it's it's booming, and it, it has a sense of unpredictability, but also, you know, some supernatural elements that are really creepy. And I thought that the characters were so well-written. And I just really, really liked this movie. And I'm very happy that I saw it in theaters. And uh, that is my number six. So that is my 10 through 6. And oh uh, yeah, we're gonna get to our number five through two. All right, so <clears throat> my number five is gonna be Baby Driver. This is one of the best movies of the summer of the year in general, and it's just one of the most entertaining movies of this year. Edgar Wright, you know, he's known for having quick, snappy direction to his movies, and this is no different. There's a lot of quick zoom-in shots, and it's not distracting, too. That's the thing. He manages to make those work. He went into really crazy directions with this film, especially when you get to the second half. My oh. goodness, the second half. The third act in particular, Holy fuck. Yeah, I'm just going to say that. The performances were really great from Ansel Elgort, who killed it as Baby. 
to Lily James. Oh yeah, and the romance between Baby and uh, L- Lily James's character, they, they were really great. Honestly, I love the romance. I bond to their romance and I truly did feel that the two of them really cared for each other. Kevin Spacey as the crime boss, he's awesome. And everyone else from Jamie Foxx to Aya Gonzalez to John Hamm, they were all really great. The action sequences are very energetic. The fact that Edgar Wright makes music a character in this film, the music actually drives the storyline, is honestly really creative. Baby Driver is just what you want in a summer movie and just a movie in general. It's fun, it's entertaining, and that's why I loved it. So that is my number five. Number four is a very small film, but I am so glad that I had the chance to see it, and that is Brigsby bear watching this in theaters was truly an experience the cinematography and the direction it's just wonderful here this is one of the best directed movies of the year this is one of the most beautifully shot movies of the year and the performances from everyone really are great of course um i can't really comment much on like everyone else because that would be a spoiler but i will just say that kyle mooney He is truly fantastic here. The way he brings this sense of innocence to this character was just really great. Like this is a character that you instantly fall in love with and you just feel bad for the character, of course, not going to really say why, but you know, you just can't help but go on when you really like see the character, the theme of imagination and being creative don't stop being creative and you know me being someone that's into stuff like imagination all that stuff that's actually why i really enjoyed captain underpants too because i love the theme of imagination with that film and that's the same thing here with brigsby bear i'm a sucker for movies that deal with themes like that and brigsby bear handled that very excellently in my opinion and the soundtrack too in this movie my god the soundtrack is so beautiful and then of course when you get to the ending it's truly one of the most touching endings of the year the movie in general is funny it's sweet it's really what you want in a movie so that is my number four and number three is a netflix original movie and that is to the gigantic pig known as okcha um oh whoa I dropped, I dropped the trash can. Oh, <laughs> that escalates it quickly. <laughs> oh my god. That's, oh. What, that's what happens when I get excited. Great job, Tony. I'm so I truly did love this movie. Um, similar to what I just said about Brigsby Bear right now, it's one of the best directed movies and just one of the best shot movies of this year. My god, the cinematography is breathtaking here. It's actually so good that there are times where I would actually legitimately drop my jaw. The script is very well written, and the movie talks a lot about social media, the food industry, how animals are treated. And yes, me being an animal lover, it is pretty hard at times to watch the film, but it it definitely does serve its purpose for why it doesn't hold back on stuff like that. And to the film's credit, I can really appreciate that they didn't really hold back. Performances from everyone were really great. I really fell in love with Okcha the pig. I really cared about him, and I really cared about our lead character, Mija. I thought Mija and Okcha had a beautiful, beautiful friendship, and the fact that Mija was willing to do anything, like anything, just to bring Okcha back home is honestly really sweet and i could really respect characters like that all judges really spoke to me a lot it was actually funny um there's more comedy than i expected when i went to this film it was funny it was thrilling at times and it and when it's sad um you know there's a nice payoff there so yeah, I love Okcha, and that's my number three. And then coming in at number two for me is War for the Planet of the Apes. Now, obviously, like with a lot of people, I have been a fan of where this trilogy has been going. This trilogy, in my opinion, of course, has just been very consistent. Seeing how far Caesar has come since Rise really has been very fascinating. It can honestly be discussed as some of the most fascinating character studies in the film. I really did like where Caesar has led up to. Obviously, after the events of Rise and Dawn, you could see that Caesar has had enough. Like, he really, 
really has had enough and you really feel bad for him. And as well as the other eight characters, I thought they were really great characters, obviously, as well. And Woody Harrelson, I thought, was a really great character, too. And you could see why he is so frustrated with the apes. The slow burn pace really did work, save for maybe a few parts where I will admit I did feel the pace in a bit. I thought pretty much, I'll say... 90, 90, 95% of this movie was very well paced for me. It, it just really flew by. And Matt Reeves did a wonderful job directing this film. The cinematography is gorgeous, especially when they're out in the snow. And of course, I have to bring up the visuals. Like, wow, I, I find it hard to believe these are visuals because, wow, the apes just look so realistic. It's not even funny, really. It, it's an achievement. It's really an achievement when it comes to the visual effects department. So War for the Planet Apes, that's my number two. That is my five through two in general. Okay, so my number five is Baby Driver. This was a fun experience that I will never forget watching. And this is coming from someone who has never really seen any of Edgar Wright's movies beforehand. And after seeing this movie, it makes me want to watch his other movies that he's done. And everything about this movie works really well. The writing in this movie is great. The humor is amazing. The music that they chose is brilliant. And the pacing is just brilliant. And I didn't feel like I was getting bored. I was really entertained by it. And I also feel that this movie shows that everyone involved had a lot of fun with this movie and i think it definitely does show overall baby driver is a fun movie that i really cannot wait to see again so baby driver is my number five my number four is dunkirk the way i can really describe dunkirk is it felt like more of an experience from the sound design to the cinematography and the fact that they re use real planes and boats this was like a real experience that felt like i was there at dunkirk with the soldiers trying to survive and i would say that this movie is more about the effects of war so that's kind of why there's not really much to the characters but as i said this movie is more focused on the effects of war, and I would say this movie did that really well, and this is definitely one of Christopher Nolan's strongest movies. So Dunkirk is my number four. My number three is The Big Sick. Now, I don't really have an awful lot to say about this, so I'm just going to kind of go over this really, real quick. But, but what I do have to say about this movie is that this is a really heartfelt movie with a very interesting and emotional story that made me feel that this was done with a lot of passion and with some good laughs, especially with the stand-up, and some really good performances by everyone in the movie. So my number three is The Big Sick. My number two is Wonder Woman. Now, I would say out of all the movies that have been released this summer, this is the biggest surprise of the summer because I wasn't really excited for this movie like some other people were. I know some were putting this as the most anticipated movie of the year or of the summer. But for me, I just kind of thought that, eh, because... I just thought the trailers were okay, and I didn't think they were great, but I didn't think they were bad either. And considering the DCEU at that point, I would say post Man of Steel, pre Wonder Woman, I would say it's been more divisive among fans, audiences, and critics with Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. After seeing it, this was a big surprise, and the more I thought about it, the more it got better and better, and I enjoyed it a lot more and more to where it's where it's at the spot on my list. For an origin story, 
the story for this movie was good and interesting. The humor was timed really well. And as a movie overall, this doesn't come off as being forced. It just feels natural. It doesn't shove anything down your throat. It just feels natural. And how can I not talk about the No Man's Land sequence? Sure, the slow motion does get annoying after the after a while, but that sequence alone is just brilliant. And I think what this movie shows is that there is hope to be had with the DCEU. And the best way I can really sum up this movie was that it was better than I expected. So my number two is Wonder Woman. So my number five, uh, like I said, there are a lot of movies on this list. I don't know why this is a pattern, but there are a lot of movies on this list that are very hard to watch. Five and four might be the hardest, but five especially uh, for me is, is one of the hardest movies to watch of this year, and that is Wind River. Now, Wind River, I was obviously looking forward to it because it's from the same director, uh, actually same writer of Hell or High Water, and I believe Sicario, he did yeah, as well. Yes. Yeah, yep. he did both of those, and I love both of those movies. But this is actually his directorial debut, and what a directorial debut this was. I mean, just right off the gates, um, t he really did show that, you know, this isn't just, you know, he's not just talented as a writer. He is just as good as a director. And what he would, the story that Taylor Sheridan's really telling in this movie really did resonate with me. Again, just like Okja, it's kind of shedding light on an issue that we don't really think about. And it's showing how bad the community of Wind River really is and why it's like one of the worst places to ever go in America. And uh, it, it was, it, it was really hard to watch. Definitely. But what made me even more, um, you know, really what helped this movie stand out even more for me are the characters who are anything but your one dimensional type of stock characters. There's so much more to them. Jeremy Renner, especially. I've always loved Jeremy Renner, but this was easily his best performance. I mean, he absolutely stole the show in this movie, uh, especially a scene where we find out a personal connection he has to the main case that's going on. He was just absolutely incredible. And I think this is really going to put Jeremy Renner on the map. I mean, he's been doing a lot of action stuff, but after this movie, I think we're definitely going to start seeing more serious work from him because he was incredible here. And Elizabeth Olsen as well. I feel like it's not talked about as much, but I feel like she was just as great as Jeremy Renner. Sure, her character wasn't as complex, but as we saw in the movie she wasn't as used to the climate and seeing her kind of have to acclimate to that I did think was a really compelling story and when it's eventually revealed what actually went down with the case yes it was predictable but I thought it was still extremely well done and again this is stuff that happens that last line in the movie I mean really stuck with me. It's not really a film that I'll go back to often, but it's definitely a movie I do want to see again. It's just definitely more of a film where don't expect to have a good time with this movie. This is a very depressing, dark film, but it really is all the better for it. And for all those reasons, Wind River is my number five. And the same with number four, Detroit. Uh, another very highly depressing movie. Um, Detroit, for me, kind of came out of nowhere. I remember... If it wasn't for Tony here, I probably wouldn't have even known about Detroit. I remember we were going through uh, anticipated lists, and Tony's like, dude, you got to watch this trailer. You know, I think it could be on our album mentions. And not only was it on my album mentions, but it ended up being one of my favorite movies of the year. I absolutely love Detroit uh, for so many reasons. One, because it has an amazing cast, and it really is a great story. But again, also because of the way it really does portray this issue. It portrays it in a way where I think it could have been very one-sided and it actually found a way not to do that. Uh, it's a very timely story. A lot of the issues that's going on in this movie are still kind of going on today in many ways. Maybe it's not as bad as it was then, but it definitely does show that, yeah, this is still kind of stuff that happens today. There's all kinds of times where you'll hear a certain story that happens and, you know, certain people will work together to try to cover it up and fabricate it. And that just really fascinated me in this movie. And of course, the second act of this movie is insane. It really is. It is 
really depressing, but it also feels very realistic. And what's so sad is that it actually happens. You know, it's not just something where you're watching a movie. At that point, it becomes less of a movie and more of a experience. It's more like you're watching something that you really wish you didn't, but at the same time, it's really showing the true horror of what went down in that motel. And it is really just shocking and tragic stuff. John Boyega was fantastic. Your Will Poulter, however, if he doesn't get nominated for supporting actor, I'm going to be very shocked because he was incredible in this movie. I really loved what he did here. That is why Detroit is my number three. Uh, I mean, my number four, actually. <laughs> Detroit is my number four. Number three. This is a film that I was so hyped for. It actually was movie I was most looking forward to this summer, and it definitely did not disappoint in any way, shape, or form. My number three is absolutely War for the Planets of the Apes. I mean, talk about a franchise that just gets marginally better every single film. Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I really do love that movie, but I will admit the human characters, I really did not find that interesting on a rewatch. I still really do like it. I still think it's a very well-done film. Uh, I just particularly I think it is the weakest. Dawn, on the other hand, I fucking love. I think it is a near masterpiece. I really do love it. War is, in my opinion, this franchise's masterpiece. I loved pretty much everything about War. Really, they just they kind of went all out with this movie. They really did. And yes, the war isn't like a full-on war the way you would expect it to, but it's more of like the internal war that everyone's dealing with. You know, should we really go to war? Do the apes really have a point here? And Woody Harrelson, I think, is probably the thing that impressed me the most about this movie because he's anything but a throwaway villain. In many ways, you can kind of understand where he's coming from, why he wants to revolt against these apes, why he's so adamant about taking them out. And Without spoiling, there's actually a really cool thing that they do with the humans in this movie that I think really just brings the series full circle. Uh, but Woody Harrelson in particular was just so damn compelling. He is, in my opinion, the best human character this series has ever had. I mean, I just really understood his reasoning. And uh, there are definitely some really tragic scenes. To me, this was as emotional as the third act of Logan. It really was. I mean, to me, it's on par with that. It's just a really incredible final film. It's one of the best final films I've seen in a while. And I'm really, I, they're probably going to do more somewhere down the line. But I do think this is definitely a good time to stop. I think this was definitely the right way to conclude it. It even had some great comedy in there from, uh, you know, Bad Ape, who is definitely one of the best uh, comedic com you know, relief characters of the year for sure. There were a lot of entertaining movies this summer. However, I don't think any movie entertained me more than Baby Driver. Holy shit, I love this movie. I mean, this is just the definition of an extremely fun, non-stop, just consistently entertaining film. And it also is wholly original. So many people talk about how originality is dead. You can't do an original film anymore. Yes, you can. Watch this movie. It is absolutely possible. Sure, there have been stories similar to it, and I'm sure that there are things that has this story is kind of replicating. But the whole, the way this movie incorporates music is unlike anything I've seen before. It truly is an experience. You know, it's not just a movie. It really is experiencing things that go down in a baby's head. It's extremely well done. It's, you know, got an amazing cast from top to bottom. I think all the performances are just fantastic here. So many great characters. Jamie Foxx was so funny. I really loved his character in the movie. Kevin Spacey was great. Lily James. I mean, uh, John Hamm, just an amazing cast overall. And of course, Ansel Elgort was perfectly casted as Baby. I think he really did an incredible job here. And the twist that the movie takes was actually really shocking. I was not expecting to go in the direction that it really did. And for a while, Baby Driver was my favorite film of the summer. We're going to get into my number one a little bit because that changed very, very quickly after I saw uh, my number one. But this is just such an entertaining film. And just like you, Tom, this is a film that the second I was done with it, I'm like, I can't wait to watch it again. It is by far one of Edgar Wright's best films. This is a director that, in my opinion, really can do no wrong. Every movie I've seen from him is just amazing. And Baby Driver may very well be his best movie yet. And uh, I definitely can't wait to see it again. And for all those reasons, it is absolutely my number two. All right, everyone. And it's time for my five for two. All right. So my number five is Spider-Man Homecoming. This was like the first summer movie that I saw. And I was really surprised. I thought this movie was going to be terrible because um, the marketing was awful. And uh, to be completely honest, I, I was surprised. 
Uh, this movie I loved. It, it was extremely funny. It, it, it was it was really clever. And uh, the action was always fantastic. You know, Tom Holland and Spider-Man was just great. You know, Michael Keaton was great in the film. You know, the, the cast, the ensemble cast is so great. I love the bits with uh, Tony Stark, you know, Iron Man. And I just had a really great time with this film. Uh, and, I, and I really can't wait to buy the 4K Blu-ray when it comes out. Uh, my number four is Okja. Uh, this movie blew me away. I went vegan last year for um, about a few months because it was more to lose weight. Um, but, you know, when I decided to go vegan, it was because, of, you know, it was because of the low type dietary aspect, but also because of the animal cruelty that I was exposed to when I, I was deciding that at the time. The treatment of animals is something that I stand up for and stuff because it's terrible it's just it's like to put into perspective oh you know we're, we're humans and we're animals but you know it, it's it, you know we we have feelings but it's okay to just you know kill a scared a scared kid a pig it's like it, it makes no sense um and this film really highlights that it was was really raw in emotional and it's extremely well written not hard to watch moments in this film but you know it needs to be that way the way that this film also concludes i think is ha has the best ending of the year it just because it just not to spoil it, but like it shows the truth of the industry and of, of kind of like life. The performances of this film are fantastic. I loved the, the directing. It was never boring, and it it was really captivating. Its portrayal of the animal industry was just uh, so well done. You know the friendship between the characters in the film. The chemistry was all there. They really developed the characters well in the first like thirty to forty minutes. It's a very slow film, but it works. I just loved this movie, Okja. Uh, and that's why it's my number four. And I really want to watch this movie at some point. All right. So my number three is a film that I was not expecting to like because I hated the first one. And I was, I've never been surprised to enjoy a film as a day because I love this film. And that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Like I said, I, I am not a fan of the first one. I didn't think it was funny. I didn't like the characters. They were, it was not a well-written film. And I didn't like the action. So the fact that this film completely fixed every issue that I had with the first one, I was floored. And it did it in such a fantastic way, and I, I just loved it. There, there's character in this film, and especially with Star-Lord, and I really connected with it. Um, and I got really, I, I really got into like the emotional aspect of this film, which is something that I really wanted more of in the first film. And like the whole world building is just fantastic. And... Um, the action in this film is actually great compared to the first one. I was not a fan of the action. The first one, action is a very iffy thing for me, and I loved it in this film. It was very thrilling and it was very exciting. Um, I thought all the acting was great. It was really well written too. Uh, thank, thank God. And it was such a memorable, fun, and emotional experience that uh, um, I'm happy that I have the 4K of. I, I, this is by far my most surprising film of the year, and I guess I could say it's underrated because. Some people are very indifferent on this film, um, which I understand. But for me, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and that is why Guardians Galaxy uh, Volume 2 is my number three. And my number two is a film that uh, I know is very polarizing, but I absolutely loved it. Um, and that is It Comes at Night. I loved this movie. Not only, in my opinion, does it have fantastic characters a fantastic setting but it honestly in my opinion is terrifying and it's very hard for me to be scared by thrillers or like horror movies and this one i found to be genuinely terrifying and it was because the tension was so well built and the use of like metaphors and dream sequences was really interesting and it was creative and the aspect ratio changes i thought was just really interesting um this film is really well written in my opinion you know it is a very also you know kind of quiet movie and that's why when these big moments happen it's all the more terrifying and it is a film that i really want to rewatch at some point it is a film that i you know i feel like i need to watch for my times to really get it i have my own interpretations and it is a film that really intrigued me and i found to be terrifying and just so well written and just very different it's very slow but i was never bored by it like I remember I looked at the runtime quickly at one point, and I was like 40 minutes in, and I'm like, there's only been 40 minutes. It feels like it's only like 15 or 20 minutes. I got really into this film, and that is why it comes on as my number two. So my, my number one best movie of the summer movie season is absolutely The Big Sick. Now, I enjoyed the trailer for The Big Sick. I really wanted to definitely at least like this film. I know the reviews 
have been really, really huge. But I went to this one just saying, as long as it's good, as long as it's a solid movie that had me caring for the characters and all that, you know, that's all it really matters for me, pretty much with any movie out there. But this movie ended up being an incredible rom-com. Like, I did not think I was going to love the movie this much, but wow, did I love the movie this much. This was just such a refreshing movie to come out. The performances were really great, and Kumail Nanjiani and uh, his wife, Emily, they did such a terrific job of writing the script for this film because this is based off Kumail's life. Of course, I don't know which part of the story is true or false, but regardless of some of the bits were false or true, I did still find myself just so engaged with the storyline. And although the film I did feel was having a little bit of a hard time to find its footing when it started, luckily around like the 15, 20 minute mark, the film found its footing. And I honestly just love the movie completely right there. The characters are so well realized. This film is also very funny. I need to say that right now too. Like, although this is a film that does have its dramatic moments, it is also incredibly funny and when it focuses on the comedy it had me after hands down one of the funniest movies of this year in general and the good thing about this film is although yes it does go serious it never gets like too serious like just when the film is about to get too serious there's a comedy bit added in there to line up the mood i guess to keep the movie from being like a completely depressing movie and i appreciate that and the balance was really good too the balance of romance drama comedy kumal nanjiani my god this guy he is so great here of course he's had a couple of small stuff like he was in fist fight earlier this year he had a part in mike and dave so he's had a couple of small parts but it was really cool to actually see him be the star in this film and after this i want to see him do more starring roles because he was funny, but when he has to handle the dramatic moments, he was very believable. His chemistry with his wife, Emily, played wonderfully by Zoe Kazan. Um, they were Their chemistry was just so wonderful here, and I truly did buy into their romance. And how Kumal Nanjiani, Nanjiani had to bond with Emily's parents, it's really cool to see, like, okay, they're actually starting to see where Kumail's coming from and Kumail's starting to see like where Emily's parents are coming from. The big sick is truly a breath of fresh air. You really don't get enough rom-coms like this. Like this is honestly one of the best rom-coms I've ever seen. I'm really going that far. It's, it's definitely going to be up there as one of the best rom-coms I've ever seen. Definitely, as what Kevin said earlier, it's definitely not your typical rom-com. It doesn't really go the way... Um, like you're used to seeing in rom-coms, which I did really appreciate. So yeah, great performances, great writing, great direction, uh, just an overall phenomenal movie. And that's why The Big Sick is my number one of the summer. So my number one is War for the Planets of the Apes. Now, this is something that has really stuck with me over the summer, ever since I saw it. This movie has really stuck with me. Now, the other movies on this list have been really good, but nothing, nothing in my opinion compares to War for the Planet of the Apes. And this movie, I love the movie more and more. From the opening to the movie, to the story, to the action, to the finale of the film, this left a massive impact on me after I saw it. Andy Serkis as Caesar, brilliant. And Oscars, get this guy an Oscar nomination. Seriously, get this guy an nomination now. Okay, but anyway, I'm getting off track here. But War for the Planet of the Apes is a fantastic conclusion to what is one of the best film trilogies I've ever seen. And I think it is one of the I think the Planet of the Apes films, they have been consistently been impressive. And I think Rise is a good beginning. I think Dawn is a really good continuation. And War for the Planet of the Apes is a really fantastic conclusion to this trilogy. And I would say 
This ended on a really high note and did not disappoint me in the slightest. So my number one and my favorite movie of the summer is War for the Planets of the Apes. So my number one, uh, like I said, guys, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys know my number one is. I've raved about it enough, but Baby Driver, I thought for a while would be my number one. I'm like, there's nothing that can beat this. But then I saw a certain movie towards the end of my birth, towards the end of August. But it is a film that I am so happy that I had the pleasure of seeing. And that is none other than Brigsby Bear. This movie, it just came out of nowhere. I remember Tony and I talked about it in our July movie preview and we're like, what the fuck is this? Like, we had no idea what it was. But it wasn't a movie that, like, I was weirded out by. It was a movie that I was really intrigued by. It was such a uniquely a unique trailer in the sense that it barely tells you anything about the movie. And because of that, it's difficult to talk about this movie. It really is because there is a major twist in the first 15 minutes. So I'm going to try to keep this brief because I've raved about this movie enough but if you had a one thing in your childhood that you've always held on to and you hold near and dear to you, this movie is absolutely for you. You know, everyone has that one sort of pop culture thing in their life that they always hold on to. Tony, I know for you, it's SpongeBob. Uh, for me, there's like a various amount of things. It's this man that's holding on to this one thing that really just keeps him young and keeps him lively. And he's very different than how you and I would act. And it's just... It's really different than anything I've seen before, and it's extremely well done. And again, it's it's shedding light on this this great, brilliant idea. It's all about being creative, keeping that childlike innocence that everyone seems to lose it. I will definitely say, Kyle Mooney, I didn't know anything about this actor before I saw this movie, but after this movie, I really want to see more of him. He absolutely blew me away here. He was incredible in this movie, and uh, I really can't wait to see where he's going to go in his uh, future endeavors. But just everything about this movie, I, I could just rave about this uh, for 20 minutes if I wanted to, but again... It's very hard to talk about this without getting the spoilers. If you guys saw my review, I talked about it for like, I think like eight minutes and then just the rest of the reviews just fall on spoilers because it's just really that hard to talk about this one. I honestly don't know how you did it, Tony. I really don't. I know you talked about it for 16 minutes without spoilers. I don't know how the hell you did that because mm -hmm. I just can't talk about this movie enough um, without delving into spoilers. It's one of those movies that really sparks a conversation and those are the kind of movies that I really do love. For all those reasons, Briggs Be Bear is absolutely my number one. It's also my favorite movie of the year. I really don't see anything else beating it, honestly. If you get the chance to see it, see it. It is absolutely worth it. It is unlike anything you've seen before and definitely something that you will for sure never forget. Okay, so. Okay, so my number one is Dunkirk. Now, when the first teaser trail for this film came out, I was obviously excited because you know it's Christopher Nolan. I wasn't like over my like over the top excited for this film, um, so I had you know reasonable expectations. And then you know as the as the release was approaching, and I learned I was being able to see this film in IMAX 70 millimeter. You know the hype started to come up in all the reviews and stuff, and I said, okay, this movie, you know the excitement, all the hype, you know, you know all the reviews. Like, is this movie really going to be that good? Because Interstellar, in my opinion, was a good movie. Um, but I didn't really understand it, um, honestly. Like, I really got involved with the characters with other than I didn't really get it. You know, the Dark Knight trilogy obviously is, is a masterpiece and stuff. But, like, is Christopher Nolan, like, is this really, like, some people are calling it his best work? When I first, I said this film two, two times, when I first saw it, I saw it on IMAX Millimeter, I was blown away. I just, I, I was taken away because this film was not what I expected it to be. It is an... Uh, a non-linear war film that doesn't spend all this time on, you know, developing character, which, you know, people do have a problem with that. But for me, the reason why it works in this film is because Christopher Nolan, he captures this world perfectly. The environment, the tension, just the, the suspense, the landscapes and everything. Because, you know, it feels so real and so raw with all the, you know, the practical things that are going on and the sound mix is just in, it gropes you and you're seeing it in IMAX, this is so many millimeter, which fills up the entire screen. It's just, it's like, it's an overwhelming feeling and you get to know these characters throughout the film and you start to grow on and on. And as the film gets more intense, you start to feel more. There's so, there's so many little nuances about the film and uh, I loved it the first time I saw it. It was one of my favorites of the year. And then I saw it again and 
I loved it even more. It's one of my two uh, 10 out of 10s of the year. My other is the Red Turtle. Um, and I really thought nothing was going to beat the Red Turtle because the Red Turtle, uh, another film that uh, apparently doesn't you know, really have much character development, but it works because the world building is so great. You know, I just, I, I was so emotionally attached to that film. I didn't think anything was going to beat it. But Dunkirk is so well made and it is so intense. And like I said, so many nuances and just everything about the craftsmanship of the film and the tone and the pacing. Like the movie is perfectly paced per and the editing is just flawless. Like this movie goes by so quick, and that's because Christopher Nolan is a is a genius. He directs this film perfectly, in my opinion. Every little thing about this movie just is so perfectly captured. And the tone is always just right on point. The acting, obviously, I mean the acting, I mean, it's just so great. You know, everyone, I guess, you know, from like freaking Tom Hardy to Harry Styles, they're all fantastic. They all work well in their roles. And they all were perfectly ca cast in. And like I said, this film is very different. It was created for a war film. Uh, people's issues with war films nowadays is that they're, they're the same. And the fact that it is non-linear makes it really different and creative in an extremely unique experience, which we don't see in Hollywood really not as much as we used to. And this film takes risks, and it works. And this film, you know, it, it went for it. And because of that, it is why it is not only my favorite film of the year so far, but my favorite film of the summer. And the moment that Blu-ray comes out, I, I am going to be, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to watch it freaking 50 times a night because I love it so much. So everybody, that is our top 10 best summer 2017 movies. I would love to thank Tom Blankeny. Uh, thank you for having me on, Tony. It's been a lot of fun, actually. And I had a very good time uh, doing this. It took a lot of time to get this list together, and I overall, I just had a really good time uh, doing this. So thank you for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Thank you again, Tony, for having me on. This is always a lot of fun. I always really do enjoy uh, doing these top 10 lists with you. Uh, you guys can check out my channel, of course. I do pretty much daily videos, you know, movie reviews, TV reviews. You guys know all this stuff where I am. Uh, again, thank you for having me on, and uh, I will hopefully see you guys very soon. Thank you, Tony, for having me on. I really had a fun time talking about the, uh, the films of the summer. You know, I haven't seen a lot of the major ones, but the ones that I have seen... Uh, I feel like I had enough of a list to um, do this, and I really appreciate you having me, uh, letting me join. It was a lot of fun, uh, and I really had a great time. And uh, thank you for having me on. Comment down below and let me know what are your top 10 best movies for this summer movie season of 2017. I would honestly love to know what your guys' top 10 is. If you can do top 10, then top five top two whatever you guys prefer and of course if you guys want to check out these guys' channels tom blakeney kevin falk and albert wonder i'll leave links to their channels in the description down below so of course you guys this is 22 tiger dude here with tom auburn and kevin and spirit and don't forget that all of us will always have Yeah. 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 yeah.